Today we're getting to the bottom of a topic that comes up all the time for Sony shooters, the frame rate cap when shooting with third party lenses. One of the reasons of course to go with the Sony ecosystem is the amazing amount of lenses available. If you've ever mounted a Sigma, a Tamron or any other brand on your camera and noticed your speed burst drop to around 15 frames per second, you're not alone. We're gonna break that down, why this happens and what's going on under the hood and why it's not as big of a deal as it might sound. Sony cameras are capable of blazing fast burst speeds at this point, 20, 30, even 100 frames per second, depending on the model. When you attach a third party lens, the camera often limits continuous autofocus burst to about 15 frames per second. This isn't Sony punishing you for not buying their lenses. It's a safeguard actually built into the firmware to make sure the system stays reliable. Think of it as Sony saying, we don't fully control this lens, so we'll keep the speed at a level we know is safe. Why Sony lenses handle full speed. Aperture mechanics. At high burst speeds, the aperture blades have to open and close with incredible precision. Sony designs its own lenses and drive systems that can handle that stress. Autofocus tracking. Sony lenses are tuned to work seamlessly with the camera's real-time tracking, eye autofocus, and subject recognition. That integration is what allows them to keep up at maximum FPS. Firmware integration. Because Sony controls both the lens and the body, they can guarantee everything stays in sync. That's why their native glass can push the limits without breaking down. Yes, it comes at a cost, but if you need that utmost performance, there's really no replacement. Why third-party lenses get capped? Different designs. Every lens is built differently. Some telephotos have heavy glass elements that simply can't move fast enough. Others use aperture motors that aren't designed for rapid bursts. Autofocus protocol differences. Third-party lenses don't always fully support Sony's proprietary tracking algorithms. Limiting frames per second ensures autofocus accuracy doesn't collapse when you're shooting fast. Firmware limits. Even if a third-party lens could keep up mechanically, Sony's firmware enforces the cap unless the manufacturer updates compatibility. Sigma and Tamron have released updates, but the cap still applies in many cases. Why it really doesn't matter. Here's the part that often gets overlooked. In real world shooting, this cap doesn't matter nearly as much as people think. A lens that nails focus at 15 frames per second is more useful than one that misses at 30. Wildlife and sports shooters care more about consistent autofocus and buffer depth than raw FPS numbers. For portraits, landscapes, videos, burst speed isn't even part of the equation. Even some Sony lenses don't hit the maximum FPS under certain conditions. So it's not just a third party issue. It can actually be the physical limitations of a specific lens. Here's a real world perspective. Think about how you actually shoot. If you're tracking a bird in flight or a player on the field, what matters most is whether the lens keeps focus locked. 15 sharp frames per second is often more than enough to capture the moment. And if you're shooting portraits or landscapes, you're not firing off 30 frames per second bursts anyways. The cap is irrelevant in those scenarios. So the takeaway, the FPS cap is a safeguard, not a punishment. It reflects differences in lens design, autofocus integration, and firmware support. If you want guaranteed full speed bursts, stick with the Sony glass that's designed for it. If you're using third party lenses that of course do come at a cheaper price, expect excellent performance just capped at a level that ensures stability. At the end of the day, don't stress about the numbers. What matters is sharp, consistent focus. And in that respect, both Sony and third party lenses deliver where it counts. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If it did help you out, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, join the community, drop all your questions and your comments down below, and like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.